Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego, review those amazing bricks and plastic, and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig ghost, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today? I have been waiting to share this amazing greatness with you for what seems like forever. It's not been forever, but it's been many, many, many weeks in the making. My God, we are finally here. The rumors are true. The hype is true. Everything is real. And if you don't believe me, maybe Peter Cullen can tell you otherwise. It's been an honor serving with you all. Autobots, roll out. We roll. Anyway, we are talking about Autobots. We are talking about the one, the only Optimus Prime. Oh my God, it's incredible. How can you not love something that is iconic from the 80s? I know, I sound like an old child. I am an old child. But how can you not love something that is so incredibly iconic from a generation, from a decade, from a a standpoint of cartoon theater? How can you not enjoy, how can you not appreciate something as great as this? And then the Lego model, the Lego model itself, I didn't. We'll get into that story in a little bit, but my God, it's incredible. So obviously, Optimus Prime. 10302 is its set number. It is coming available June 1st. This thing is going to be out of stock almost immediately. I guarantee it. It's going to go on back order. It's going to, then then you'll get your stock. You'll be able to place your order if it's on back order, right? Then it's going to go out of stock and it's going to come in, out, in, out, in, out. I, I'm guessing this, that's what's going to happen with this thing throughout the year, throughout the end of the year. I'm telling you right now, if you want it, you better you better get in the queue. You better get in the queue to order it when it comes out J1 2022 because everybody's going to want it. Now, with that in mind, this thing has 1,508 pieces, which honestly I thought that's actually not that bad. Now, the parts usage in this is incredible. In you take that 1,500 pieces, and for this thing being, what, I think it's 13 inches tall, that's pretty darn incredible. It's pretty good. Now, I don't have the exact specifications in front of me as far as price and stuff like that because LEGO did not release that yet. That has to do with their IP partner in, uh, what, Hasbro. I'm assuming Hasbro. Either way, this is the supposed to be like a replica of the Optimus Prime from the original cartoon series. Now, there is a cartoon series out on Netflix right now. I can't quite remember if Optimus is similar or the same, although it is pretty pretty close, I'm pretty sure. But the retail, the, the suggested price, the, the estimate that I have seen kicked around is going to be about 170 USD. So you're talking about 170 bucks, 169.99, not too bad considering what you're getting. And I will tell you this, this is probably going to be the best 170 you spend, tax obviously not included in that, but this is going to be the best 170 that you spend probably this year on a toy. On a toy. I'll I'll, I'll put it at that. I'll I'll put that caveat on there. On a toy. But my god, this has everything. Now, it does have stickers but it does have some prints that come along with it. Now, what you are getting, you're getting a big display toy. You're getting something that you can put on a shelf, and it does transform, and it transforms, similar to the original toy back in the 80s. You don't have to remove pieces and you do all this fancy, I got to take this off, and I got to move it over here. No, 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 no. Lego designers, and the senior designer, I should say, Went above and beyond. So Joseph Patrick Kide, I'm hoping I say that right. They went above and beyond. Now you get Optimus, you get his blaster, and you get some other things that we'll talk about here um, in a little bit. But my God, it is so exceptionally amazing. He can go from vehicle mode back to Autobot, you know, standing tall guy to 
back and forth and it takes no time at all. It took me what it, I think the first time, the very first time that I did it, it was under a minute. It was closer to like 45 seconds. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I had timed myself because I was like, okay, is this is this going to be like a five minute process? Because it's a few steps. It's not a lot, but you wonder sometimes like, okay, if I'm transforming this, how bad of, how, how difficult is this going to really be? And it's really not that all. So let's go ahead and talk about what it is from the main build, and then we'll talk about what it looks like after it is transformed. So we're getting Optimus Prime in his two-legged form where he is upright, he's got his weapons, and we'll talk about all his goodies that he has as well. But the incredible thing about it is, well, this isn't, I would not call this a swooshable model. Um, this is definitely something you don't want to let a child get a hold of because things can pop off. I wouldn't say they will pop off, um, but there are definitely some things, especially down on the on the feet, um, around the toe area where you have your um, your little hinge joint here for your um, your foot going into the ankle area. That is a little bit funky because there are pieces there that if you move press a little bit too hard or whatever they can pop off. I've had them pop off multiple times. Easy to get back on, but yeah, I digress. So what we have here, you have your Optimus Prime. You have a beautifully brick-built head that can rotate 360 degrees. One thing that I'm a little sad about is on the backside, you do see some anti-studs there. Not a big deal. Uh, he does have a a plate that is used and it has a printed eyes that are on the side. Um, they use some interesting pieces here to uh, just accomplish everything that is going on here. His head tilts forward, does not tilt back pretty much at all. It's pretty much locked into place. Same with side to side. He does have his upright. I'm going to call them ears. He does have those uprights there and they look, uh, his head looks like the exact toy. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so it does rotate forward, and the, th the funny thing is, because this does transform, his head can flip around completely all the way around and rotate upwards into his body, which is kind of funky in its own right, but it is possible. Um, because when you go into the transform mode, you've obviously got to be able to do it, right? You've got to be able to accomplish this transformation, and the only way to do it is to get his head out of the way so that you can turn him back into the truck uh, or lorry that he is. So that does flip backwards, but what you have up top, you have the blue, the darker blue of his head, and then you have some metallic that is in here as well for his uh his little shield that goes across his mouth because we never see his mouth. And then as you get down below his neck area, what you have is a plethora of red, but my God, we get four by four modified tiles that have four studs on them that have the Autobot print in white on the red background. It's incredible. I love it. It's so cool. I absolutely adore these pieces and you get a few of them and it's it's something you cannot live without. I'm telling you now, if you were to die tomorrow and you don't have these pieces in your inventory for whatever reason you want to use them, you're going to be super duper sad. But those are on his arms. I guess you could call them where his biceps are. So the arms do fully swing around there on clicky joints here. 360 degrees rotation they do uh fold out to a certain degree but then you also have you know lego pieces that get in the way so it only goes so far he does have a hinge joint here another clicky joint here for his elbow um it does go at a 90 degree and then it goes down just beyond 180 degree so maybe 190 as we move forward his forearms are actually really nice they do have another print here on a two by two tile that has a yellow forward arrow. It kind of reminds me of like um, Beyond the Brick, kind of with their logo. It's a little funky. Anyway, so his hands, his hands rotate 360 degrees because they are pinned in, but they're also clicky joint as well because when you go to, you know, change this thing up and turn him into a truck, you've got to be able to move those. But here's the thing. They only move in the clicky joint way when the... 
uh, fingertips are pointed towards the ground and the back end of the hand is facing towards the sky. Uh, it's just the way that it is built up in there. Anyway, moving forward, the thumb is opposable. It can move up and down, fingers in and out. Not a big deal. Um, you can give him punching pose. You definitely obviously need it when we're talking about using his weaponry and stuff like that. But yeah, I, uh, I love it because you can close in on his weapon that he's using, his little blaster that he's using. I love it. Now, moving inward, we're going to move into the inside body. Well, I guess before we do that, uh, the arms are really built up well. They are very blocky, just like in the toy, just like in the cartoon. So that is nice. Now, I will say this. Lego did think about things like what are we what is it going to look like from behind because the mid section without his jetpack looks horrible on the inside there are two clips to receive uh two little bars to receive clips in here so that that covers up the main part of the body now the other thing is you do see some anti studs that are on the back side of what would be the biceps and things like that but that's not a big deal no one is going to do a 360 when they're at your home or whatever they may pick it up and look at it but they're that is the last thing their eyes are going to go to or ever focus on if ever so his chest does open up these are the windows of the cab of the uh the, the truck itself, just like in the cartoon, um, it opens up. This is the, um, oh my goodness, this is the removable piece. I think this is the Matrix of Leadership from the uh, the cartoon. It, it uh, can go in there. It is beautiful. I love the way that it is done. It's so nice. Uh, they use the pantograph piece there in the silver color, and then they have some trans orange that is in there as well. Um, it opens. It looks sharp. Closes up real nice. It, it's just nice, clean lines, nice, good angles. Everything works. Now, down below that, you have what is going to be the grill of the truck, the front of the truck with the lights, the headlights, and then the, I guess, running lights that are down below, the orange lights. Nothing super crazy here. All this does is it's on a lot of hinge pieces. It hinges multiple different ways, up, down, and then it has a secondary hinge. And then you have the red pieces that have the headlights on. And then below that, you have the light bluish gray uh, pieces that have the orange lights on. Those are essentially just to cover up his torso. And uh, obviously, once you put this into truck mode, they are there for a specific reason. Now, the, the thing that I found really kind of interesting is this does open way up. There is nothing underneath his you know, his torso area, but he does rotate 360 degrees around on a turntable. I think that's kind of cool. Now there is a, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a long two by six tile that there's actually two of them. One has a sticker uh, that has a kind of like an orangish, uh, two, in, in like a flame yellow color on it. Uh, that is supposed to be part of him when he is in his Optimus Prime mode. It's almost like a belt buckle. And then there is another one which is supposed to be like in the front end of the bumper, another sticker as well, and another 2 by 6 So when you put him into Transformer, or I'm sorry, from Transformer mode into truck mode, you take the one belt buckle type piece off and you put the other one on. Now before we move to the legs, he does have two wheels that are up here at the top of his thighs, at his hip joints on the exterior here, and those are simply obviously his front wheels as we get into, you know, turning him back into a truck or taking him from a truck, whatever. Looks really nice. I like the way those are done. And the legs are super duper bulky. They are very solid. They are very thick builds. Some interesting build techniques. I will tell you that. I'm, I'm going to save it for you because I think you guys will get more enjoyment out of it than me saying, well, this is what they did or that is what they did. Um, they're thick builds. And in part of the build, I will say this much, you do have uh, two bars that go into um, clips, and what those are simply there for is when you put it into truck mode, obviously you don't want your legs splaying out, you want them in line so your truck doesn't look completely wonky in the back end. But before we get down even that far, um, the upper thigh, you do again have these beautiful two by six plates, um, they have stickers on them, not not anything crazy wild, but his kind of his, um, what are supposed to be, I guess, like his gas tanks that are on the side of his thighs around. If there was a knee joint, it would be just above the knee joint, I would imagine. 
These are nice. These are painted um, silver pieces here. I do like these. Um, they're just tiny assemblies. They do rotate, uh, but they only rotate um, 90 degrees. Nothing a big deal. I, I actually don't think you rotate them at all. Um, it's just the way that they're, uh, they're, they're attached to that assembly. But then moving down, we go from the light bluish gray into that dark blue, which everybody absolutely loves. We do get a printed piece on all of the tiles, or on all those tiles, on a <laughs> on a rounded tile that does receive a um, an axle uh, an axle piece. Um, they are on the tire. They're supposed to be like the wheel assembly hubcap. Obviously, it's not a hubcap, but you get my point here. It's to cover up the ugly side of the uh, inside of what where the wheel would be. So just make it more even transformery, trucky um, as it should be. But the legs are super duper thick. As I said, his well, maybe it didn't say. So his his joints for his legs, um, his hips can be splayed way out. You can put this dude in it almost a full straddle, which is kind of weird to me uh, for something of this size, and it'll actually hold which is even more bizarre to, to me, believe it or not. Anyway, uh, the legs can rotate around at the knee joint. They can 360 degree if you really wanted to do it that way and do some weird, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, some exorcist stuff or something like that. Anyway, so they can, uh, there is no knee joint though. Obviously, you guys should have known that being as big of a model as this is, being as big of a set as this is, there's not going to be a knee joint because all that does is create issues. Even if it is the most solid Lego piece that is out there, eventually it is going to wear and tear and it's not going to be able to hold the weight and then you end up having a busted model that doesn't look very good. Now, what they do use is they use the one by two cheese wedge pieces here. They give you some texture in silver painted silver in the front um, as you go down his shin. And then they use them in blue for his uh, for his feet. The 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 top end of if he was wearing a shoe, it would be the tongue of the shoe. They use three of them, that, three of them there, one by two uh, cheese wedge pieces, which are nice. I like the way those are done. Now, I've got to say this. Um, what you have here. As far as display, you're you're pretty much going to have his legs together no matter what. Okay, just just realize that is the case. If you're if you're a toy collector, you're a comic book fan, you're a cartoon fan, whatever, you're a Lego fan, you're more than likely going to display him where his legs are pretty much straight down. I, I and there's really no other way to do it. Now they can uh, rotate out, um, but rotating them. Uh, I'm sorry. They can rotate out at the hip and they can go forward and backward, but you're never, I don't think you're ever really going to get him into a, like a, a, a true solid walking or running pose. I've tried. It doesn't work. It ends up coming out really stupid looking and then things break and it just turns into just giant chaos. So my recommendation to you is build it, set it and forget it. All right, well, with that in mind, so you have this gorgeous model. I mean, it's a few inches wide. It's many inches tall, centimeters, millimeters. On the backside, which I did not talk about yet, on the backside, it actually doesn't look that bad. How many times have people criticized Lego models and they said, oh, well, there's anti-studs on the back and it looks so ugly and it, I just, I don't like it. It's so silly looking. How can you do such a thing? That clearly isn't the way that I talk about things. But with that in mind, Lego actually did some tiling using some slope pieces, using some tiling pieces uh, for the legs on the backside, blue, light, uh, light bluish gray. And then up top, like I said, without this rocket pack, this jet pack, you would have this weird kind of experience that is going on in here. And they did it. They handled it. It works. Um, it clips in. There's two clips that it locks into. And it's beautiful. It's nicely done. You have another Autobot print on one of those uh, modified tile pieces there that have the four studs on it. It's beautifully done. It is a focal point when you turn it around. And you really don't pay attention to any other anti-studs. Maybe, maybe on the back side of the arms you do. But here's the thing. If you turn... So I'm talking about the shoulder joint now. If if as a human, okay, because you're not a dog or, or 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 a cow or a chicken, 
if you take your shoulders and you kind of roll them back to where your arms move kind of towards the rear, your elbows kind of move outward, right? But your arms also move outward if you kept them in a static position. That is what you can do here to help alleviate that. But then at the elbow joint, instead of moving it up and down, you can also move it in and out. So that also helps to, you know, get rid of kind of that weird looking feel, that design, that negative stuff. Now, if you're keeping his arms in close, you know, your elbows are hugging your rib cages. Well, of course, you're going to see that stupid stuff on the backside, right? But let's not focus on that. The point is you have a gorgeous model. You can pose it however you want and it's incredible. The smokestack sticking out of the top of his bicep. Hello. How many dudes at the gym are like, hey, bro, you see what I got going on here? That's what Op- That's what Optimus is doing, right? I mean, let's be honest. That is what he is doing right now. He is flexing for all of the Decepticons. Like, come mess with me, bud. So one of the things that I want to talk about, one of the issues that I had constantly, and we'll talk about all the little extras that come with this. One of the issues that I always had at the very bottom of his leg, and the leg is done really well. Like I said, it's super duper solid. And you have the foot area that rotates up and down. You put it down when you put it into truck mode, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Now, these are ball jointed in. And you have a one by four plate that has a few pieces that are attached to it and whatever. It can essentially be a stabilizer. But what I've noticed is when you go to maneuver this thing around or whatnot, depending how you move it, and you may not even realize it. And I still have yet to nail down exactly how these come off. But every time that I try and put Optimus in a weird pose or try and do something funky, these things pop off. That is my only negative that I have come across. And it's fine. You just plop them back in there. It's not a big deal. They're essentially lock pieces. Uh, The problem is if you move things a little bit too far, um, they pop out. Not a big deal. You put them back in, game over, good night. Now, one of the other things is you're wondering, you know, how is this thing going to be able to stand without sliding and moving? And well, Lego thought about that. And what they did is they used a few Technic pieces actually on the bottom of the legs, not on the feet, but on the bottom of the legs. And what they did is they put orange rubber pieces. There's three on each side that kind of make a little triangle here. And they're essentially there to be able to hold your Optimus in place. Looks, looks nice. Works Perfect. Not an issue, no complaints, game over, good night, right? I love the way this thing looks. It's incredible. But then you add his blaster, and here's the cool thing. It's brick built, it's huge, it's amazing, it can go in his hand. The barrel on the front can rotate manually, of course. You put it in his hand, Optimus is ready for action. He's like, let's Autobots roll out, you know, that 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 whole dealio, right? The big deal that Optimus is. Now, here's the issue that I ran into. When you drop down Optimus's arm, uh, the weapon has a tendency to, or I'm sorry, when you put the weapon in, the weapon has a tendency to pull down uh, the actual arm, which to some people is going to be a problem. They're, they're going to say, that's stupid. I hate it. Why, what, what is going on there? Uh, it is the weight And it doesn't happen all the time, but I I have noticed if you leave it for a certain amount of time or depending how you're posing it, it will pull it down. It'll pull it down a few clicks, which isn't a big deal. You just have to be cognizant of how you are posing this thing. But it is a beautiful little blaster that he has here. You do have the Energon Cube as well. Uh, the Energon Cube used here with the trans magenta pieces, the one by two bricks, and then some plates and some tiles on it. It's actually pretty large considering. I actually like the way that is done. It was something that I, you know, being a Star Wars fan, yes, but seeing this was really, really neat. You get his Energon Axe as well. And this thing was used in the... One of the episodes his it w- was with a duel with Megatron on top of the Sherman Dam in G1 episode, More Than Meets the Eye Part 2. And it's a really built-up axe. 
you have a bunch of trans orange splat pieces here. You have some trans orange slopes. You have some trans orange Nexo night shields that are going on here. And essentially all this beauty is doing is, well, I say all this beauty is doing, it can be attached and you put it in his hand, you do his thing, but it's actually not his hand. And here's the interesting thing. You pull his hand off. You slide this puppy in, and now you have an axe because it is axled in. And now you have a chopping axe that Megatron can use. Megatron, I'm sorry. Optimus Prime can use. It is so neat. It's a really cool th- feature. It's a it's a nice little build to add on. And I love the way that it is done. You're essentially building up a an axle that has some you know, one by two pieces on it. And then you're just putting all this decoration that is on top of it. The axe blade is massive, which makes it even better yet. It's just, it's just cool all around. There's literally nothing that I hate about this set. I think it is one of the most amazing sets of the year to date. It's just beautifully done. And if that wasn't enough, you get a name placard. Yes, it does have a sticker, unfortunately, but you do uh, you do get a name placard that does have Optimus Prime and it has all his stuff that is on it, which, you know, is super important, I guess, if you're an Optimus fan and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it is still, um, I mean, it's still a neat little piece, especially if, if you plan on displaying it, you're going to want this just to be able to put next to it. If you're one of those people, I'm maybe not so much, uh, but it has, you know, what he is Optimus prime. It has all his stuff like his strength, intelligence, speed, endurance, his rank, his courage, his firepower, his skill. He's pretty much hot stuff. You know, everything is pretty much, uh, maxed out. Not everything, but it is, um, it's nice. I really like the way that is done. And then, like I said, you've got your, uh, Posability on this thing is just incredible. Now let's talk about price point. Is it worth $170? Yes. 10 times over. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. It's a beautiful set. It is a great set to pose. It's a great set to play with. But we haven't even transformed it. We haven't even transformed it. Now the transformation actually goes pretty quick, like I had said earlier. There's not a whole lot that goes to it. In the instruction manual that you guys are going to get, which is a very thick book, there's only 18 uh, pieces, eight, eight pieces. There's only 18 steps that go through it, but the steps are pretty common sense. Okay, so I'm going to try and walk you through this, and you can go back and forth, and it's super easy. You pull his jetpack off on the back. You click his legs. Like I said, you have the bars and the clips. Lock them into place. And you rotate his hands around. Then you spin him the whole way around at his torso because he can rotate 360 degrees, like I mentioned. Then you lift up his chest area, which is the grill piece. Then you rotate other things back. You you tuck the head. You turn the head. You move the head. You got to get it out of the way. Then you start bending the arms around. You've got four wheels in the, of the rear which are his legs on the back side of his legs just below the calf if you're if you're looking for it that you are putting onto the ground then you start moving the arms in put the 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 grill down um make sure the hands are tucked and then before you know it you pretty much have everything that you need you rotate what is what are the feet down behind the rear tires you add his weapon into the bed of the truck and boom game over good night i know i've said it a lot i don't know where it came from this week but i've been saying it a lot then you have it it's done and you have a truck and going back to autobot uh transformer takes no time at all to the biped mode takes no time at all it is just as easy you're like well that sounded like a lot it's actually not it went super fast, and it was fun to do. I honestly think, like could have said, 270 USD for this. I'd have been in. It's a gorgeous model. Now, I know some people were saying, well, how does it go to the, uh, to the Ideas Project? Uh, I'm struggling. What was it called? The Big Mech Model. Uh, Z- Zoltron. Voltron. <laughs> I knew I would get there. Voltron, not Zoltron. Uh, Voltron. People were like, oh, well, how's it going to scale in there? I, I don't know. 
My Voltron is in a box, like box, like not, not in its original box. It's boxed up in an attic right now. But I, I will say this has great size to it. It'll work well. I, I think it'll complete a collection. It'll complete a display. It'll be a focal point, especially if you're a, a giant Transformers fan. You need this. You do. And I'm not saying that because, you know, I've got mine in front of me. Well, maybe because I am saying it because I have it in front of me. It's incredible. But you definitely need something like this in your collection. It is dual purpose. You can, like I said, biped, truck. And here's an interesting fact because they give you different facts as you're building this thing. And I made a side note of this specifically. In the um, actual model of this, not Lego, but in the actual toy, you had to take the hands off to turn it into a truck and you had to store them. You don't have to do that here. Lego thought all about this and they're like, we don't have to. And that team, the team did incredible work to get this model accomplished. I think Hasbro and the Transformer family are going to love this. I'm sure they've already seen it. They probably already got in a copy of it to be able to mess with. You guys won't be sad about it at all. So that's going to wrap up this episode 236. We will be back with some more things. Stay very close to the podcast because there are very many things that are going to be coming very soon that are new, awesome, and amazing. Until we meet again, I meet again, you meet again, we meet again here. I'm your Minifigos, Matt. Let's build on it. Ah!